people do not necessarily want some things known to the public, but they also did those things. There are things you as a person would want to like keep separate from your public life. Mm-hmm. That does not count. No, then they, they should stop, stay off social media. and They should not post it. But the minute you put it online on social media, it's our business. Hello guys, welcome to The Source. Today we have the one and only tea master, Edgar Obare. Edgar, yeah. how are you? Good, good, good. It's now his tea Sorry, his tea <laughs> Edgar Obare is here and he's going to tell us what he does and who he is. So, Edgar Obare, like you said, um, I'm a YouTuber. Basically, tell stories about people and... Really, sometimes I vlog, sometimes talk about relationships, but mainly talking about interesting things that we find in Kenya and celebrity news seems to the, be the hot thing in Kenya. So, mm-hmm. People these days wanna kuogopa. Let's say wanna kuogopa. Mm-hmm. So how are you finding um, this new venture of trying to talk about gossip and celebrities and all these other things? I don't understand why they fear me. Like me, me in my head, or at least with people around me, only the guilty are, are afraid. Them. But th- that's only the guilty people who are afraid. Everyone else, we are cool, we are chill. So I think people do not necessarily want some things known to the public, but they also did those things. So it's our responsibility as press to bring information to the public and bring light to some issues that we, f- we feel are not doing justice to our country and we're trying to fix this country so it's just a job whether people like me or not it's just a job edgar you're sure you don't have anything that people would want to know that might expose you because you said people who are guilty are the ones who should fear of course i have plenty of things plenty of secrets but wh- whoever's willing to do the work you're welcome you're welcome to do it it's i think it would take someone to take a lot because the person who's good, it's, it, it's, it's like a police officer. The one who's good at investigating is probably the hardest to investigate. What about privacy? Understand it as this. These are public figures. Mm-hmm. They sell us their lives. Mm-hmm. They sell us their privacy. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like Beyonce was cheated on. Made an album, sold it to us. So they profit off their private life. So why should it be... Now they start saying, oh, now I'm private, now I'm private. When people are in the morning waking up, telling each other good morning on Instagram Live, like we don't need to know that stuff. But the minute you put it online on social media, it's our business. It's now our business. But then there are things you as a person would want to like keep separate from your public life. That does not count? No, then they they should stop, stay off social media. They should not post it. I have never gone to someone's house, broken in, broken into anyone's house, gotten their private papers or details. Never. These are things they did in the public themselves. So it's all our business. What do you hope to achieve? I think uh, what I hope to achieve is build a company, be able to hire people. And like from the stories I tell, be able to help people so that we change the narrative that some of the evils that happen in Kenya, that they stop or at least reduce, like let's say if infidelity is such a problem in Kenya or if marriages are not working, we want to find out why. We want to find out what people are going through. Yesterday I was doing a story on uh, like being a baby daddy, baby mommy, that issue. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of information there I did not completely know. Mm -hmm. And so things like how much a baby, how expensive it is, how, how even if you hate the person you had a baby with, you should at least try to work it out for the sake of the baby. So such topics which really they could happen to anyone. Mm-hmm. So because we are talking about these two celebrities, you we all get lessons from it and you, you get to understand how to handle when you're also put in the same situation. And other people share their experiences, they share their tips, where to go to a doctor, where to get free uh, medicals for your baby, where to get checkups, pediatrician. So there's a lot of things that go through the stories that it's really valuable. So we have celebrities who have managed to keep their spouses off the limelight. Everyone has rights to their privacy, mm-hmm. but when you're in a public figure, it's a very different ballgame. And this one specifically, Betty Kello, mm-hmm. if 
she had never posted about him, not shown us his hands, not gone on trips and then teased her audience. Then there would be no interest in this. But Betty Carlo has complete has insisted. She teased us. Teased us time and time again, showing us his arm, showing them on vacation, showing him like figure. You understand? Yeah. So the minute she started that, she started something that she really cannot stop. And when I say he's dating the wrong person if he wants privacy, mm -hmm. Betty Carlo is a news anchor, a public figure. Like literally on our TV screens every day. So how can you expect to date this person and not be discovered? Are we creating a monster that always wants to know and wants to know and we feel entitled just because this person is a celebrity? Now I just want to know, uh, Edgar, who makes your dreadlocks? Edgar, who does this? Who, who are you sleeping with? Who is your child? Who is you? People will feel entitled and they are not supposed to feel that way. We've been like that for years, centuries. So with social media and having celebrities, I think it's kind of, it just, it is what it is. They use their fame to, let's say, sell us things through brand, brand advertisements, brand deals. And they also sell a piece of their lives to us to mm -hmm. see. So they've already put themselves in that position. There's no person who is famous who did not do something to get there. They got there, they wanted. So it just, it, it is what it is. When the people, want to know more about you it's, it's it, you're the one who started it so in terms of how you get your stories um you have people who reach out to you and tell you so this is what i know about this and this how do you fact check and make sure that this story is actually true if someone says let's say i i know this person this is my friend i ask so show me how he is your friend do you have conversations together do you have their number you say something i can check and you can send me his number or her number and they can actually check it on Mpesa and give me the full name. When you really want to know if someone actually knows another person, you know, mm -hmm. those tiny details and the, then what people do not realize, when you come to me and you're trying to expose someone, you're, you're also exposing yourself because what he did and what you, you're both exposing yourselves to me. Yeah. And if, if and when I choose, I might also expose, expose you. Expose. So, yeah, so I it kind of prevents someone from trying to lie to me. Mm -hmm. Because when you say something and it's so outrageous and you give the proof of it and whatever, and then I later find out it was not true, then I'm investigating you then. What are your boundaries? What are the stories that you'd never talk about? I think some of my boundaries are certain age groups like minors. Minors, anyone under 18, I feel it's not... They, they don't have to live this with the, the rest of that. When you're young, you make mistakes and it's it's normal. And then another boundary is people of the LGBTQ community. Since in Kenya, we don't have equal rights for everyone, so it would not be fair to expose this certain group where they're already so discriminated against in this country. If a celebrity paid you not to do a story on them, would you do it and maybe how much would you ask for not to like expose them? I think there's there's no amount of money. I've not gotten to this level by taking bribes or taking money. This this it just does not happen like this. And it's also you also think of it as future. Mm -hmm. My reputation is pretty important. People would not be able to open up to me like this or come to for me to stories. Really personal. Hmm? Like mm -hmm. the number of rape cases I've dealt with. Offline is, mm -hmm. is insane. So there is no m money I can attach to losing that. Really. In terms of making a change with these people that you've encountered and they've told you their stories, is there a way that you've helped them beyond just telling their stories? People need to understand when someone comes to me, a source, and we're talking about a particular story, before I even post it, there's a lot of conversations that have, have happened since before, before I post. So we've talked, we've talked about the situation, how they feel about it, and it's kind of, it's not easy asking someone to open up. Yeah. And when I tell the story, they feel they were heard, their voice was heard. Whoever this is that hurts them, they can hear them. Because most of the time they've been blocked, ignored, blah, blah, blah. So they feel like, yes, someone stood up for me, to, did the right thing and told the truth. This person, like, Im imagine 
you dated a certain celebrity, they did you very wrong. And then you're just sitting at home and people out here believe he's the best person in the world. He's Jesus. Yeah. While you know the truth, you didn't know how annoying that is. <laughs> hmm? So I feel like I do help. They feel like they're taking back their power, taking yeah. back a little, bit, a little bit of their dignity. It's not just this person used me and threw me away like that. So how do you make your money? Uh, make my money basically YouTube. YouTube pays me for my content through the views and running ads. Yeah. Instagram, I, I run ads for small businesses. You've talked about many people on your channel, including one Kamenegoro, who has previously said that this is as far as you'll ever go. What do you have to say to this? I think I really like being underestimated. It gives me so much drive to really prove you wrong. And how she said it was so bitter. And it was so to such irony that her would say it. Someone who makes a living every day out of talking about other people. When she's talked about all of a sudden, oh, I'm offended, I'm offended, they caught feelings. You touched her now. Huh? So you say <laughs> I really it's really I, I didn't think that I would touch a nerve like that. Previously you've talked about um, mm, pulling down some of your stories. What has led to this? I think um, some situations have been in legal situations and also sometimes just empathizing with these other people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just like I already proved my point. So there's no, there's no need to continue. We can pull this down and save some of their dignity mm -hmm. because there are people too, maybe they're making amends privately. And I, I really hope that some of the celebrities who have pulled down videos who are actually doing something about it and making amends in their own lives, making it up to the people who love them, their families, their friends, and trying to rebuild their reputations. Mm -hmm. Because isn't that what you're trying? We're trying to get people to see that these people make these mistakes, but you can also come back from it. It's not, it's not a it's death not sentence, it's not the end of the world. Anyone can rise above from this. And I think that's, that's pretty powerful. Important. Everyone makes mistakes. It matters what you do after. If you're not collecting stories and talking, giving people the tea, what else are you doing in your life? Yeah, probably watching movies, seeing my family, hanging out with people, just the normal normal things everyone else does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most, most of the time I'm probably working. So with what you do and you being online and doing YouTube for, I think, two years now, uh, what have you noticed about um, our consumption online? I think it really depends. I think Kenya, like the YouTube space, it's still small, but it keeps getting better every month, every year. Now I see we have channels crossing a million, crossing more channels crossing 100,000, which are owned by individual people, not companies, yeah. not music channels. So I'd really like to see this industry really grow and we have YouTubers being celebrities. Online content, it gets people talking, brings people together, it's, it's all good. The tea is sweet, but does that make us look like all we ever do or all we care about is tea? Like our lives revolve around the tea? No, it does not. It's it's a small part of your day, but let's say it's an exciting part of the day. Kenyans, we have enough problems. Mm -hmm. Problems on employment, infrastructure, food, money, poverty. We have enough problems. So when these small, small things come come around to distract us lift us from one day it's, it's so important let's, let's enjoy them yeah let's let's enjoy because what so what else will you know we like to talk about the matatu strike or Maybe doctor locus. striking or locker <laughs> i didn't even see that story <laughs> huh? or locker studios are started with locust or bbi this, mm. this these are things that are so depressing and it's like it's reality but your life but so you want to just for what moment in time Think about someone else's problem and put yourself in their situation and talk about them and this. It's just in that um, With all these stories that you've had and the many more that you're going to hear in the future, are you 
open to writing a tell-all book? I've never actually oh, thought certain. thought about writing a book, mm-hmm. but maybe it's something I should consider when, like, yeah, long term. When in future, when I've established certain things and they can run themselves, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe I'll, when I have more time, yeah. when I'm done building the career and the life I want. I'll check in with you in a few years <laughs> to see if that's possible. Thank you for coming through. We'd love your tea, and we can't wait to see what you do next. Hi guys, my name is Edgar Barre. You're watching The Source and subscribe for more content. Mm-hmm.